So in this video, we're going to talk about polarizers. And in particular, we're going to talk about linear polarizers and how they have how you can represent a polarizer with a matrix. So in the last couple videos, we found out that you can represent an electric field or, or the polarization state of an electric field with a Jones vector or what was called a Jones vector. So this is the Jones vector for X polarized light. So it just represents if this is our uh, so let's call this our x-axis, which is horizontal, to make uh, angles more standard. This is our y-axis, and this is our z-axis. Uh, this vector just represents an electric field, which is pointing in this direction and propagating along this direction. So it's propagating along z. And if we were to look at this over all space, it would really look something like this. It would look like a, a sine wave. But that turns out not to be important for most uh, analysis involving polarization. And so uh, we also don't need to worry about the fact that the wave is traveling most of the time. Uh, so we can represent everything super compactly just with our polarization state. So what direction is the electric field pointing? And this is a normalized Jones vector. So it's got unit magnitude and it's pointing in the direction of our electric field. And so what is a polarizer? Uh, well, as it might indicate, a polarizer is something that just lets in uh, or just passes one component of the polarization. So if you send in, uh, depending on how you orient the polarizer. So for example, if you've got an X-oriented polarizer, and I'm just going to draw that kind of like a, a circle with a slot in it. Then if you send in X polarized light, so an electric field in the X direction, then it'll just go right through. Uh, nothing, nothing interesting really happened. Uh, but if you send in Y polarized light instead, so an electric field polarized in the Y direction, it will get completely removed by the polarizer. So there will be nothing at the output. You won't see any electric field. It'll completely absorb or reflect depending on the polarizer. Uh, the electric field. Now the super cool thing about a polarizer is since it affects X fields in one way or polarized fields along X in one way and polarized fields along Y in a different way, we can construct a matrix for how this behaves simultaneously both with X and Y fields. So say we have our, our Jones vector for our X polarized electric field. We know that or we, we just said that that's going to be completely passed through by the polarizer, so it's not going to do anything. So it's going to it's going to enter as one zero. It's going to emerge as one zero. But for y polarized light, uh, we we said that it's going to absorb all of it, or it's going to reflect all of it. So there's going to be nothing left at the output. So whereas we initially had zero one or y polarized light, at the output we have zero zero. So nothing is left. And since we know how our unit vectors respond to our polarizer, we can use these two to make a matrix, which is just one, which is just the, uh, the columns of the matrix are just the response to the unit vectors. That's just some linear algebra. So our polarizer matrix is just one, zero, zero, zero. So this now, now allows us to directly figure out what any polarization state uh, or how any polarization state behaves as it passes through a polarizer. So what happens when we, for example, have the state, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, 1 over root 2, 1, 1. Well, all we need to do is act on that with our polarizer matrix, and we what do we get? So 1, 0 times 1, 1, or there's going to be a 1 over root 2 out front. That's going to be uh, 1 up top and 0 on the bottom. And so this is just what we would expect if we were to do out the, the math sort of uh, step by step. And that's that it passed the X component, so it just allowed it straight through, and the Y component, it completely removed. So it left the amplitude of the X component unchanged and completely destroyed the Y component. But now we have a matrix representation, so we can figure out how it, uh, how it behaves when we attach or when we send in any polarization state of light. Well, so this was an X polarizer, and you might ask, well, what about a Y polarizer? What's, what's the Jones matrix for that? How do we represent that? Uh, well, for a Y polarizer, 
we're send we're passing through y polarized light and we're killing any x polarized light so if we had x polarized light which is just the jones vector one zero it just dies it becomes zero zero whereas if we had y polarized light it just passes right through so it stays the same and so again we can use these to construct a matrix which looks awfully similar to the one we had before it's just the position of the one is changed and so if we wanted to know how a y polarizer acts on light say maybe it's we want to know how it acts on the same vector that we had before one one we just do the same exact thing so we write out our matrix we write out our vector we multiply the two and what do we get zero that's zero for the x component and one for the y component and again this is exactly what you would expect so it just uh, it just kills off the x component and leaves the y component untouched now you might be saying well jordan that's great but like this is super simple math why are you making it complicated with matrices all i have to do is look at this thing and set it to zero or look at this thing uh, and set it to zero so depending on the polarization direction now that's that's true like polarizers are really simple to deal with when they're just oriented in x and y but sometimes uh, often actually they're oriented at an angle so rather than just being an x or just being in y they're at some angle with respect to your optical axes so maybe they're at a I don't know a 20 degree angle for example and then it's not immediately clear or it's not immediately obvious how to go about uh, using just pure math uh, or just setting one component to zero uh, we sort of have to do something a little more complicated but the real strength of these matrices and I'll call this the the polarization matrix let's say polarization y is that we can cascade them so if we have, for example, a bunch of polarizers, so maybe we polarize at 20 degrees and then we polarize at 30 degrees and then we polarize at 40 degrees, it would be really painful to have to calculate, okay, well, I've got this Jones vector, maybe A, B, some arbitrary components. Uh, first, let me calculate the first polarizer, then let me calculate the second polarizer, then the third one. Instead, you can just multiply these all together uh, and then you get a single polarization matrix, which you can then use to act on this vector. So there's huge advantages when you have more complex optical systems to dealing with these matrices because you can just cascade them directly. We also have way more optical components than polarizers. So you might have heard of wave plates. Uh, these also have a matrix associated with them. You can have uh, mirrors. These have a matrix associated with them. You can also have circular polarizers or beam splitters. There's a huge array of optical components that have uh, Jones matrices and can just, you can, if you have a, an optical system, what you'll end up doing is just multiplying these matrices. So maybe you've got a wave plate and a polarizer and a beam splitter and so on and so on. And then you can figure out for any arbitrary input vector input polarization how does it behave at the output once once it goes through your system and so these matrices are going to be incredibly powerful when you deal with optical systems so i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if you did please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel uh, also if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post those down below and i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can and thanks for watching i'll see you next time